Hi, welcome to the May offering of Software Engineering for Software as a Service. I'm Dave Patterson from UC Berkeley. And I'm Armando Fox, also from UC Berkeley. Uh, we are your co-instructors, and we also teach the on-campus class on which this one is based. Um, we wanted to set context a little bit by letting people know what to expect. This is the second time that we're offering uh, this class online, and it is software engineering for software as a service, so the emphasis is pretty important. Uh, yes, we are going to be building software as a service and deploying uh, web-based applications to the cloud, but that's not what the class is really about. The class is about teaching you important software engineering techniques, processes, and tools that are the same ones that you would use if you were working at leading software companies today. The reason we've chosen to use software as a service, and in particular uh, Rails, as a way of teaching the material is we believe that the very best tools for teaching these concepts are the ones that are part of that environment. So that means that we are going to spend the first couple of weeks uh, in particular teaching you some things about the Ruby language that may be unusual to you if, uh, unless you've come from sort of the Lisp or Scheme world. Um, and it's because we believe that those language features, although they're unusual and maybe uh, will take a little getting used to, are very important in the ability of some of the tools that we're going to use later on to help you, a product, help you be a productive programmer who follows good practices. So yeah, for the first couple of weeks, it might not seem that we're heading towards software as a service, but trust us, we will get there. We're laying some pretty important foundations, and we hope that you'll bear with us. Um, and by the way, this is a software class, so you are going to be doing programming assignments. Uh, it is not the case that all of your assignments are going to be multiple choice, although there are going to be multiple choice quizzes. Programming assignments are going to be you writing substantial amounts of code. Uh, in some cases, you'll submit those as online uh, submissions, and we will automatically grade them. In other cases, you'll be deploying your code to the public cloud. We're going to teach you how to do that, and we will grade the deployed version of your code uh, the same way that real companies evaluate their own publicly deployed web services. Um, and these are the same assignments that the UC Berkeley juniors and seniors do uh, who take this class on campus. We've not altered the assignments or watered the course down in any way for the online audience. That means that it's tough, and we're going to have some statistics for you uh, in just a minute about what your colleagues who took this, uh, the first offering of this class in the last uh, month and a half, uh, what they had to say about it and, and how much time they spent. Um, as an inducement to helping you get through these homeworks and also to keep your interest in the class, uh, everybody who submits the first homework will receive a promotion code valid for $10 worth of Amazon cloud computing credits. Uh, that would allow you to do some of the coursework in the cloud if you want, or to maybe do a personal project on EC2 using the skills that you learn in the class. You'll also get a coupon good for three months worth of a GitHub micro account, uh, which normally would cost about $7 a month. So Amazon and GitHub have generously agreed to uh, support the course and to get people excited about using software as a service and, and developing in that world. Uh, and lastly, by way of uh, prerequisites and preparation, we are assuming that this is not your first programming class. We're assuming that you are already proficient in programming in some other ideally object-oriented language. Uh, Java, C++, Scala, doesn't matter to me. Uh, but if this is the first time you're taking any kind of programming class, you may find that it's a bit, uh, a bit fast for your taste. We don't recommend that you take this as your first programming class. So, One of the issues for these MOOCs is just how much time do you have to be able to take them. So we thought it would be useful to show the statistics from the students who took it the last time, which is on this slide. As you can see, half of the students spent six hours or less on it, and then about another 30% spent six to 12 hours on it. So that may be useful to you in terms of planning what it will take for you to do this course. Some students took even more than that. Now, you're going to need to do more than just watch the videos in the PowerPoint. Uh, you're going to have to look up some information on your own, and we've given you three options on how to do that, and these are listed on the course website. The first is a list of links to free resources on the web where you can find the information on your own. The second is a list of some classic books that have been around for a few years on both Ruby, Rails, and software engineering. You would probably need this suite of books to be able to look the information up. The third choice is a book that Armando and I have been working on even before we decided to offer this class online. It's called Engineering Long-Lasting Software. Uh, there's a lot of versions of this book. You could get a print-on-demand version, and for the month of May 2012, we'll make that available for $10 in the United States. There's going to be some extra charges in other parts of the world, unfortunately. There's a Kindle version, uh, and they have a lot of versions for the Kindle. The Kindle 
is uh, Clindel for the cloud, a cloud reader, so it works on any browser. And there's apps for just about every computer on for Macs and for Windows and for iPads and for Android phones and stuff like that. You don't need to buy a Kindle reader to use the Kindle version. It runs on just about any standard uh, software. Also, for the first time, not available last semester, we finally have a version that runs on the iPad, and it's got the most interactive version of the material. Alas, Apple's policy reasons, they only want to sell it in the United States because we called it a textbook as opposed to a novel. <laughs> so uh, that's the decision. Alas, we would really like to bundle this together so you could just pay one price, but these are independent corporations that don't really cooperate, so we try to keep the prices low. Basically, everything's $10 in the United States so that you could afford to combine them together, but we can't offer you a bundle. Now, one of the big questions that came up last time was whether there's certificates for this course, and the answer is no. We, Marmando and I are doing this so that you can learn, and you know, thousands of students last semester really appreciated the learning. Some of them wanted some kind of indication that they finished the material, so we're offering instead an untrusted statement of accomplishment. It'll list how many of the videos you watched, what your score was on the homeworks and what your score was on the tests. We'll offer that to anybody who gets half of all the points in the course or gets at least half of the points on each of the exams or quizzes as we call them. Uh, the, the statement says, that, you know, this course is not from Berkeley. There's no UC Berkeley credit or things like that. But it'll have our signatures on it, and so you can take this thing and print it and put it on your wall to make you feel good. But really the way this is, we're doing this for your educational value, and the students who really loved it last time was that it's not to get not something that you can work the same as a college course on a transcript. So that's just about it for setting expectations. Uh, we want to point out that this is intended to be part one of a two-part course. We're hoping that in uh, late October, early November, we'll be able to offer part two as an online offering, but uh, that doesn't exist yet. So uh, at this point, we're still excited to do the course. We hope that after watching this video, you're still excited about participating. If you do decide that you're going to try out the class, uh, please make sure that you watch the very first mini lecture video uh, called Hints for Success. This is based on uh, you know, issues and, and problems that your colleagues had taking the class the first time around, and we think that uh, it'll be very easy for you to avoid some of those pitfalls. So we put together uh, a few minutes video to maximize the chances that you'll do well in the class. So we're looking forward to having you. Uh, it's hard work, but the students who completed it last time had great things to say about how much they learned, and we hope that you also learn a lot and that you give us feedback during the course uh, by using the forums so that we can make it even better in the future. Good luck.